Hello, Grace Baptist Church family. Pastor Chad here. Uh, we have a video uh, today that we wanted to share with our kids from our church. Uh, being the pastor of family, my ministry is focused on the whole family. And today we want to focus on the kids. Uh, with everything going on, and with everyone at home because of this coronavirus, kids, there's a lot of things that aren't normal, not the same. Well, I want to let you know that today I am in the junior church room, as you can see, where we have junior church every Sunday. I wish we could have been with you this past Sunday. I missed you. I miss seeing you guys run around here, and I miss playing uh, some games with you and going over our Bible stories and talking about our faith and praying together. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about our Bible story. We're going to talk about a Bible story that has to do with where we are in our junior church material, the life of Christ. And we wanted to bring this to you uh, so that you can be encouraged too. There's a lot of things out there right now that make us uh, maybe scared or wonder about this virus. But I want to let you know um, that as a pastor, as a Christian, as a man who follows after God, that God promised that He'll never leave us nor forsake us, and that our faith can get us through such times as these. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to worry during times like this. We can trust in the Lord. And I want to talk to you today about a story from the New Testament, uh, from the Gospels, where Jesus showed that He loved people. So today's story, I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this very thing. How do you know that God loves you? God sent Jesus to save us. God sent Jesus to save us. And so I want to share a story with you about a man who came to Jesus that was very worried. Uh, an official to King Herod, a very important man. And his son was sick, and he was concerned. He was worried. Just like people are concerned and a little worried about those who, who have caught the coronavirus. And so he came to Jesus, and I want to read that story to you. The book of John, chapter, chapter 4, verse 46, it says this, so he came again to Canaan in Galilee, where he had made water into wine. And at Capernaum, there was an official whose son was ill. This official was concerned. He was worried. He loved his son. And his son was so sick, and, and he, ne he knew he needed to be healed. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea of Galilee, he went to him and asked him to come and heal his son, for he was at a point of death. And so you see how serious it was. And so Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Speaking to this man as a Gentile, one who was not a Jew, he said, You want to see great signs and wonders. And the official said to him, Sir, please come down before this child dies. Jesus said to him, Go. Your son will live. Why? Why did Jesus say that? When he went and said, at one point he said, you, you want to see all these signs and wonders, then you'll believe in me. And Jesus said to him, and the man said, please come to my son, heal him. In other words, he said, Jesus, I believe who you say you are. I believe that you can heal my son. I don't need signs and wonders. You are enough. The man believed the word Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. As he was going down, his servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. So he asked them the hour in which he was getting better. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. The father knew that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. And he himself believed. He believed, and he and his whole household, they saw Jesus work, and they put their faith and trust in Jesus. This was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. 
So here was this high official. He was one of King Herod's officials. And he came to Jesus seeking uh, uh, for his son to be healed. He believed that Jesus, at his word, could heal his son. He had that faith. There are many people out there today that we know that are sick. And, and we pray for them. We pray for them to be healed. We pray that God would work through the doctors and give them wisdom. And we pray that uh, people that with the, even the coronavirus, that they would be healed. We will get through this. God will see us through this. This won't last forever. But in the meantime, what can we be doing? What can you be doing as a kid? What can you do? You could pray just like this man did. He came to Jesus with his need. If you know someone that's sick, maybe you know someone that has a coronavirus. What can you do? You pray for them and you believe God for them. And you trust that God will be with them. And then, what else do you do? Well, this man and his whole house, this high official, they believed. We pray that people through all these things that are going on, that they will believe. Here, who can heal sick people? Jesus can heal the sick people. And that's what we believe. And we want them to be healed of their sickness, but most of all, their sin. The Bible says that sin separates us from God. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus loved us so much that he died on the cross for our sins and he rose again on the third day because he loves us. And he loves you. And he loves those people that are sick out there, even those with the coronavirus. And we pray for them. And we pray that they would be healed. But we pray most of all for them spiritually. For this is the reason that Jesus came. So what can you do as a kid? You can pray. You can pray for people, even those with the coronavirus, that they would be healed, that the doctors would uh, have wisdom, uh, that they would come up with things to help people with this virus uh, medicine. Would you pray and believe God for this? But most of all, pray for the people in our nation and around the world to come to know Jesus Christ, just like this official did. He put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Pray for people just like him to be saved. That is something you can do. And third, the third thing you can do besides pray for people that are sick, pray for people to be saved, seek God during this time. Here, the scripture says right here, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given unto you as well. We need to seek God during times like this. We pray as a family. We pray for people that are sick and we trust God during times like this. God promises never to leave us nor forsake us. He will always be there for us. Would you do, do those three things that I asked? One, pray for people that are sick. Pray, two, for people to be saved. And third, seek God during times like this. Well, families, we have something else planned for you. We've hooked up through our gospel project through Lifeway. Uh, we have a digital online resource. We, we use this book every Sunday with digital uh, videos that we show on the screen. And our junior church workers uh, every Sunday have junior church with your kids. Well, we're gonna bring this to you online, a resource to you. We're gonna send an email link to you in the next couple of days. This just came out through Lifeway and they have a whole platform for families to have their own junior church on Sundays. So be looking for an email from me and we'll go through steps and the process of getting your kid connected to junior church on Sundays as well. We're praying for you, and I want to pray now and ask God's blessing upon our church, upon our families, and we trust Him during these times. Father, thank you for your great love for us. I pray for each and every family member uh, in our church and everybody in our community. We pray, Father, that you would help churches to be a testimony to you. We pray that uh, for people with the coronavirus to be healed, we trust you for them. We pray for cure. We pray, Lord, for um, wisdom for doctors. We pray as well for people to come to know you as Savior. Father, we pray for your hand of protection upon us. We love you and thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Well, just know that as a church, um, as a staff, 
pastor and I, and we are praying for you, we care for you, uh, and we can't wait to be together again. Until then, listen to your parents, obey your father and mother. Until then, keep praying for people, and keep praying that God would use you, even as a kid, to tell people about Jesus. Until next time.